Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry. It's so That's funny okay. That it's 2017 and we don't have like regular I know, right? Like Wi-Fi the connection. connection. I know <laughs> Wi-Fi is terrible. I'm like constantly like I hope this connects. I hope this connects, you know. I know. I've been, I've been sitting here watching you being like, "Why can't she see me?" <laughs> I know. I hate actually sitting here, like, because I'm like, people are watching this, and I'm like, do I tell a joke while I'm waiting? Or... <laughs> you do really well, though. You like fill in the gaps really well. I was watching you. I was like, how's she gonna? How, what's she gonna say next? But um, <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Cool. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Thank you so much. I'm really, really, you know, it's great to have you on the show. I'm delighted that you could come on. Are you in LA at the moment? I'm in LA at the moment. Yeah. Are, are you working or you know, what are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm here working. I have I had a couple of shoots and a couple of meetings and I'm here for the next couple of days, which I'm not complaining about because it's amazing weather right now. It's like the middle of summer. so Awesome. Yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know or that hasn't been following your career today, um, your profession is, you know, you're a full-time model. Is that right? Right. Yeah. But we obviously have you on the show because of your transition or your kind of the, the recently, you know, you've been kind of all over the media for uh, turning pro professional Muay Thai fighter. Um, and you yeah. just had your first professional win. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The first of many. Yeah. You um, know what? It's been so good because like... We'll get to it, but for our viewers who might not know your story, explain to them how you got started in Muay Thai. So I, um, I well, I originally first started it because of fitness, but I, um, I started taking it a lot more seriously. I, I had last year, I had like a breakdown. Um, I was in a really bad place just with work, and you know, I've been modeling since I was thirteen, and I've always constantly been under pressure and criticism and judgment of people because of my body and and I've spent my whole life suffering from eating disorders and psychological disorders and and body dysmorphia and um you know I was just in a really bad place and um I was suffering from a lot of things and I was really depressed and really like really insecure um and I was being asked ridiculous things like, you know, to go on 10 day fasts before shoots and things like that. And I was just, um, and I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I need to get away. Um, I have a family house in Thailand. So I was like, I'm going to go to Thailand for 10 days and just, you know, just be by myself and just feel better again. And then I went out there and um, I started going to a local training camp Um and then it turned out that the, I just, I got it completely hooked. And I went from, you know, training every day to training twice a day to moving into the camp and living and breathing and eating and sleeping and Muay Thai. And, and uh, a 10 day trip turned into a nine month trip. <laughs> it, you know what that sounds like for anyone that trains, that sounds like the dream trip. You know, like, yeah, it really was. I, I was living the fighter dream. Um, but I just honestly, it brought me out of everything that I was going through. It got me healthy again. It got me eating three meals a day. It got me, you know, I became strong and my body completely changed and I found confidence and it, it really helped me, um, just as a human, it just helped me grow. It helped, it kind of saved me, it kind of saved my life. Um, Which so it was so really ironic, Mia, because people really think that, you know, um, to be a model, obviously, that you have a lot of confidence, you know, your uh, body. Right. Confidence, yeah. It, it, you know, I would actually confidence. say that it's the opposite. I would actually say that we're probably the most insecure people in the world because we are constantly judged every single day. And it takes the thickest of skin. And I tell you, even after... 15 years of doing it, it's still not easy to walk into a room and have somebody completely pick you apart from head to toe. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, why, do, really... why, why continue to do it? Because you're obviously like super intelligent and you obviously have a career as a fighter if you want it. But, you know, obviously you're, you're, you're beautiful. You know, it makes sense for you to be a model. Mm -hmm. but, but why do you continue to do it? Um, at this point, I did think about that, especially I did think about that because I do have an education and I, you know, I can do other things, but 
at this point, I honestly feel like I have somewhat of a responsibility and a duty to try and do what I can to make the change in the industry that I want to see. Um, because I was that 14 year old girl that was looking through magazines being like, why don't I look like this? Oh my God, you know, I, I should be skinny. I should be this. And I want to help and change the, the standard of beauty and, and it is changing. And I think that there is definitely, you know, with a lot of, with the Ashley Grahams and, you know, the, the plus size girls and the curvier girls, and there's definitely a movement that's happening. And honestly, it's power in numbers. And I think that at, I'm going to try my best, you know, if it comes to the point where, where I'm not making a difference or I don't feel good about what I'm doing, I'm absolutely going to stop. But I think, I feel like I owe it to the 14 year old me to try my best. hundred percent. I would agree. And definitely now with this, you know, Muay Thai martial arts background as well, you know, I know for me personally, it's, I'm delighted to see it, you know, it brings such a positive light on the sports and it right. takes that negative connotation of that. If you want to be a fighter, you know, like it's, it's not for like the pretty girl or the stereotypical pretty girl right. you know, that, that you can be both, you know, so it's and brilliant. everybody thinks that I think, especially with Thai boxing, because it's, it is so brutal that I think people think that fighters are scary guys that go stark fights in pubs and, you know, and it's not that way at all. At the end of the day, it's a martial art. It's extremely respectful sport. It's, you know, and I think that, yeah, it's, it's shining a lot of light on the sport as well, which I'm, so, I'm delighted to do. Um, but yeah. I mean, you could have picked jujitsu, something you, you chose the yeah. dangerous like martial art that there is, you know? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered a, like a full transition to MMA or have you started even working on a grand? Yeah, event? absolutely. So I have a couple of Thai fights that I want to do in the next few months that have panned out. Nothing 100% confirmed, but um, things that I want to do just for my own, just as like a hobby, you know. Um, and then I'm going to start full MMA training, um, which honestly... I think that people need to, everybody's getting very excited and going, so when are you fighting in the UFC? But yeah. I think that everyone needs to remember that I don't need to fight. This is my, it is a hobby at the end of the day. If I can have a full fight career and a modeling acting career, amazing. I'm going to do both. But at my own pace, you know, I, I'm a big fan of martial arts. Martial arts changed my life, saved my life. Um, so the more I can learn, I'm so excited to, to get involved in jujitsu, wrestling, judo. Um, the more I can learn, the better. And if it comes to the point where they go, you ready for a fight, then sure, I'm ready for a fight. But that's the plan. This, oh, I can't wait. I'm, not that I'm, I'm excited for, for my, I'm just excited to see you fight, regardless right. of whether it's MMA or Muay Thai. But have you found any kind of negativity, um, you know, transitioning into the kind of the fighter life or with fighting? Absolutely. There's been, so, there's been a, a lot of, I mean, I don't know if you saw when I went on the MMA hour with Ariel. Um, yeah. But, you know, before I went on, there was a lot of people going, what the hell is she doing on there? She doesn't deserve to be there. Um, she, you know, I, people were saying that I was discrediting him because I'm not a real athlete. Um and I just, I, I kind of thrive in that, you know, I like to prove people wrong and I've dealt with it my whole life that I've been judged on my appearance and I've been judged from what I do. Um, and I, I love the message that, you know, people go, so I don't get it. Are you a, um, are you a model or are you a fighter? I like the idea of why, why the hell can, does it have to be one or the other? We can be whatever we want to be. You can be it. I love that being a multidimensional woman, you know, and I think that, that that's a great message to, to pass on. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, and they will continue to say so. And it's really funny listening to the response of people when I say that I'm, that, you know, I'm going to go train MMA and, and everybody go, like, I've read a couple comments that like, you know, there's no 90 pound division. She's going to snap like a twig. Like she can't, like, I'm about 160 pounds, and I'm five foot ten. Like, I'm a, I'm a, not a small girl, and you know, I, it's, it's just funny how people love to judge, and yeah. I think especially in the fight community, people judge, but 
um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to prove everyone wrong. So the thing about online comments and, and stuff like that is that the people who are writing it are definitely not the people who are training martial arts. So absolutely. Know. Yeah. And, I, and it's the same with watching fights, which I learned. I really learned actually when you step into a ring, it's a whole, I can't judge people's fights anymore because it's so easy to sit back and say, you know, he should have, he should have kicked him then. He should have needed, but you're not the one that's in the ring that's doing it. So I, I definitely learned that lesson. <laughs> what, what has that been like? Because for anyone, like I, I don't train uh, Muay Thai, I do Jiu Jitsu, but I know from competing in Jiu Jitsu that when you're, when you're in fight camp and you're training, you have all these kind of connotations and ideas of how the fight is going to go, what kind of moves you're going to pull, and then it comes to actually right. fighting, and you're like, I suck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> have you experienced like have you experienced anything like that? You know, like we obviously having your your pro debut, you know, did you leave the fight thinking, shit, I could have done a lot better? Honestly, it's the it's so funny because people I mean I won, which was great. But by TKO like, as well. By TKO, yeah. So I mean it people are like, isn't that the best feeling in the world when you have your hand raised? But honestly, at the time, I felt, I didn't feel happy at all. I felt filled with disappointment. I felt like I didn't perform anywhere near my ability. I felt like I almost let everybody down. I let my trainer down. I let, you know, the people at my gym down. I felt like I let myself down a little bit um, because, I mean, I personally, I've spent a long time training before I could fight. I think I was ready to fight a lot sooner, but I didn't. And I, you know, I I was a I know my abilities a lot better than what I performed in that ring, and it's because you're so filled with emotion. Because it's it's your first. It was my first fight. It was there was cameras on me. It was being filmed for a documentary. It was, you know, it's really common in your first Muay Thai fight that you don't even throw a kick because you're just you you can't you cannot think straight. So, I, I as soon as I came out the ring, the first thing I said was I want to do it again. And everyone was like, all right, well, you know, calm down. Mia. And yeah. I was like, no, no, I want to rematch. I want to redo it. And they're like, you can't rematch. You won. Like, you can't. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And I just felt like I wanted to redo it because I was thinking, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep that night because I was thinking, oh, I should have done this. I should have done this. Why the hell didn't I do that? Um, so I'm excited for the next couple of fights to get that sort of stage fright out of my system when I can actually fight with a clear head and if that ever yeah. does happen but. why what was the decision to go pro straight away because um i'm not quite sure what the, the process is in the states but over here um with my Thai with kickboxing usually you see people like take like a k1 fight first they'll go right yeah that's the normal that's the normal way you know you'd go c class and then b class and then eventually you go a class and you go pro that's the, what normal people would do but i'm just a little bit i'm i'm a very like zero all or nothing kind of person and um i don't know i was just watching fights i would we'd go a couple times a week and we'd go watch fights and i'd watch them and I'd be like i can do this i'm gonna do this and um i like to get myself in situations where i'm under a lot of pressure and i think that's when i perform the most um so yeah i don't know just a little bit of crazy <laughs> i support it i support it i'm like that myself but I yeah. want to talk to you about um, why you decided to go to Yokel and talk to me about your experience getting to train alongside Senchai because that to me oh. is like the pinnacle. Like he the is the, like, the, the great dream. fighter, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't actually know how I got in touch with Yokel, but we'd be we've we've been in touch with each other. They're so lovely. Um, and I trained out in Samui, and they were so lovely to invite me over to, to train before my fight. Um, and Sanchai offered, you know, he was in town at the same time, and he was he, he offered to come in. He'd just come out of a fight. He landed back in Bangkok, and he came to train with me, which I really appreciate because wow. no other fighter would come back on pads the day after a fight. And um, I mean, the, it's such a, they're so they're so amazing. He's so amazing. I was not myself. I was really fangirling. I was really nervous around him, um, which I do, which doesn't happen to me very often. But yeah. you know, when we first started training, and he was he was watching me on the bags, and I was like, 
like I was struggling to just put a combination together. I was like, ah, Sanchez watching me. Oh my God. Um, but you know, it was, it was amazing. He, the guy is, has unbelievable experience. He, it was so nice to pick his brain as well and ask him about fights and, and about the emotions like does Cause he probably, he doesn't, he probably doesn't feel the emotions that we feel. He, the guy can't even, he can't even remember how many fights he's had. He just goes, I don't yeah. know, 300 something. Um, but yeah, did you, feel like you had to, did you feel like you had to win his respect a little bit from, from him straight away or? I, had, I, I felt, well, I mean, like coming up to the fight, I, I felt like I wasn't taken seriously at all by any one tie because I think everybody just judges me. I think the, the entire world just thought, let's see how she, she does when she gets hit in the face. I think everybody had this like cloud of doubt over me. And with Sanchai, I definitely felt like I can't, I can't wait to tell him when I've won. That was, that's all I was thinking. I can't wait to tell him. Was, losing was not an option. I can't yeah. wait to come back to him and say, I won. Um, Cause he was going, he was saying, he was like, win, like you're going to win for sure. Right. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I can't wait. I can't wait. I hope you'll be proud of me. Um, and I think he was. So yeah, I can't, I, we'll be, we'll definitely be training together more in the future. And actually I'm looking into um, fighting on the same card as him um, at a fight in September. Wow. At New York that would be amazing. In September, yeah. So then to, you know, to go on that process together and to train together and then go and go out and do the fight together, that would be, that's a once in a lifetime thing. So yeah. What what was the one or the did he give you any advice? Like was there anything that you've kind of stayed with you that he said to you or told you whether to be with training or with the fight? Like what's what's the most important thing that he said to you? Um I don't know, something that really that it was just it's more of his energy. Like he's so calm and still and unfazed by anything and I was a bit like like I remember leaving and I was like ah you know and they're like you know good luck with your fight and and he was just he just looked at me and he was like don't be scared like it's you know like it was just it wasn't an option that kind of like he and just that energy that having that like it's a decision you don't need to be scared you don't need to be doubtful it's just you just decide not to be so yeah that's I mean, he's, yeah, he's incredible. Arguably, you could train every day. You could train as hard as you do. Um, you know, it could, you could, for fitness, you could have your sparring for like, you know, kind of like a safe competition environment, I suppose. But uh, why do you fight? I ask every fighter that I have on the show, like, what, what is it that, that makes you want to fight? Is it competition? Or do you feel like you kind of exercise demons when you get into the, the ring or the cage? Honestly, I think that the fight thing, the training, whatever, anybody can do it. But the, the fight thing, you're born with it or you're not. You're born with this fire inside you that makes you want to step. Because I always realize to step inside a ring and put yourself in front of another person to try and, you know, you have to be a little bit crazy. And you're either born with that crazy or you're not. So... A lot of people do it and then they go, that was great, but never again. Or a lot of people do it because they have to and they don't really have that fire inside them. But I, it's just, I think it's something that you're born with or you're not. And I almost, I knew it when I started training Muay Thai that I was going to fight. When, uh, there's no way that I could do it 90% and not follow through. And also the other thing with Muay Thai is it's not like Jiu Jitsu or Judo or anywhere where you get belts where you know yeah. what level you're at. The only way to know what level you're at is to fight someone. So I also wanted to test my ability and see may, see if I was any good, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, and I wanted to prove to myself, um, just as like a bucket list thing, you know, that even if, I, if, even if I did just do it once and then I came out of the ring and said, that was nice, but it's not for me, um, that at least I'd done it kind of thing. Yeah, but, of course. That makes so much, it makes a lot of sense, you know. You mentioned bucket list. What else is on your bucket list? Uh, a whole bunch of stuff. It was sky. I just jumped out of an airplane. There was skydiving on that list. I saw I, that. I, just, I saw that uh, on your social media. How was that? 
That was ridiculous. It was funny because I, I, I'm the most scared of heights person. I used to always say, if you paid me 10 million US dollars, I would never jump out of an airplane. It just makes no sense. Um, but honestly, after a pro fight, I said, there's nothing scarier than that. Yeah. If I can do a pro fight, then I can do anything. And you know what? It wasn't as scary. Really? Yeah, it wasn't as scary at all. There's way more adrenaline and rush and, and you know, pain and a whole bunch of stuff that comes with a fight that whereas jumping out of an airplane, you just... Well, I was just going to ask that. I was going to ask, you know, because the adrenaline that you get during a fight, have you found that uh, that anywhere else in your life? Like, you nope. know, the, the in front of a camera in, you know... Whatever. Not at all. There's nothing like it. And I've done some, I've done some, you know, live TV and, and all kinds of things and, the, you know, really high pressure situations and performing in front of people, walking on catwalks in front of tens of thousands of people. And, you know, there's nothing like getting in a ring with someone else. They, that's the most adrenaline I've ever felt in my life. And then it continues on for days afterwards because, you know, you, then the adrenaline wears off and then the pain kicks in and like you can't sleep and you know, it just, it continues and it continues. It's a, the whole thing. I've never felt anything like that in my life. So can't wait to do it again. <laughs> do you have a fight confirmed? Do we know when you'll be back fighting? Uh, not confirmed. We're in the final stages of organizing the next few all the way down to September to that fight in September, which is, which might, was most likely going to happen. But yeah, when it is confirmed, I will definitely, I'm sure you'll see it all over my social media. But in the next really? couple of days, I'll, I'll announce something. Good stuff. Before I let you go, Mia, because I know that it's like early morning over there with you, but um, we have a lot of like girls that watch our show. Um, the, the majority of, of the viewers are guys, but we do have a lot of, of girls that are involved in martial arts and also are a fan of it and, you know, want to start but are scared and you know i'm forever telling them just start just start and you'll see how wonderful it is how much it can change your life give you confidence fitness everything what right. would you say to somebody watching this that you know thought that i'd love to start but it's i couldn't do it i'm not able um first of all none of martial arts is as intimidating as it seems it seems even for me, I felt it when you walk in the gym, you feel the intimidation of everyone else. It's not, it's not what it seems to be. Just throw yourself in, do it. You access strength that you've never accessed before. It's so empowering. It's the biggest confidence boost you'll ever get. I, pr I promise you, I don't know anyone that hasn't tried martial arts and then go oh that's horrible like I, I don't know anyone that that's happened to and honestly I wish I really really wish that I'd found it when I was younger yeah. I think it would have saved me through so many of my insecurities and mm -hmm. you know it would have given me confidence um that that would have helped me as a woman in this world um it would have helped me with my body it would have helped me through so many things. And definitely when I have kids, I'm definitely putting them in some kind of martial arts. But um, just honestly, just go for it. Just try it. Just try it. Just tell yourself, just want small goals. It's all about small goals. Just say yeah. you're going to go one time. Just try it one time. And I promise you, you'll want to go back. Who are your role models growing up? You mentioned like role models there. Was there anyone for you growing up? Because obviously you're the first bottle fighter that we know of at this high profile right. level. So who was it for you growing up? Who did you aspire to be like? I had a whole bunch of role models growing up, but um, even as dumb as it sounds, but even Sporty Spice, like she was my, she was my favorite Spice Girl. I mean, I looked up to, you know, like Oprah Winfrey and there was a bunch of really strong and powerful women at that time when I was growing up. But I always said, I wish that I'd had more. We can never have enough strong female role models. And hopefully all I want to do is, is hopefully there are young girls out there that identify with my story or other women out there that, that, that can relate to something that I'm saying. And that's all I hope for. I hope to, you know, that, that it's just one person's life that, that you need to change, you know, then it's all worth it.
Are you finding there that a lot of the, the comments uh, that you're getting through on your social media are from girls? Is, is that kind of message starting to filter through? Yeah, I mean, some of the best things is when I when you get the a private message from a girl who, you know, I've had a lot of women write to me and say that they've struggled with their body or, you know, the uh, and it's nice to hear that even at my level, even at, you know, I've been on covers of magazines and all kinds of that, I'm struggling with my body too, just like everyone else and on a daily basis, just like everyone else. And I have my days where I look in the mirror and I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not fit, I need to, you know, this isn't, I'm not looking good. I have, I, I'm just like everybody else. And I go through the same things. And I think we need to celebrate our differences and we need to have a realistic standard of beauty. And women need to know that, that we need to love ourselves. Really. We are way too hard on ourselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, I get a lot of women that write to me as well that say, you know, I do martial arts. And I've always felt, I've never felt sexy. I've never felt, you know, I've always felt, you know, and it's nice to, to see that you can do martial arts and be sexy, really. Like, Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know that the, the, your last fight for um, your pro debut, it was being filmed by Sports Illustrated, who you model for. When will that yes. uh, documentary be out? That'll probably come out in fall um, this year. So that'll be fun. That's actually the only, so many people have been like, how can we watch your fight? That's actually the only way that you can watch the fight. Okay. So um, yeah, that'll come out. Well, I'll, I'll definitely keep everybody posted about when that will air. Good stuff. I just have some comments before I let you go. Um, mm. Clark Smith, role model, Matthew Atkinson, the realest thing I've ever heard, never judge a record's trust. Reese McKee, shout out for Pierce McGarry. So a lot of love and loads of people have shared the video as well. So, I mean, I know that your kind of, your media coverage has kind of been stateside and, you know, but it's starting to filter through now. A lot of the guys over here in the UK and Ireland are starting to like know your name and, starting to come out there any plans to come to ireland in the near future or have you ever been absolutely so i actually i've actually been i've actually been to ireland to watch fights i've actually gone to cork to watch some thai fights no way Listen, where actually, yeah um i went over i would say it was like october maybe not maybe, at the end, towards the end of last year yeah i was over in ireland and i went to cork and i went to go watch some thai fights and support um Support of Fido, Sean Clancy, who trains in the same uh, gym as me in Thailand. And I actually went out to watch the Siam no Warriors. No way. Night. How did yeah. you miss that? <laughs> I was there. I kept it very low key. It was very, very low key. But I was there. Um, and, you know, I'm close with Martin from Siam Warriors, who's actually working. Yeah, on Martin Horgan. Yeah, he's actually working on getting me a fight in Ireland. So I'll make an Irish debut at some point. Wow. Uh, he actually yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> So good. He actually I'm so wanted excited. me to, um, to get on a fight on the on the eighth of July, but it was I couldn't. The timing didn't work out, but it, I got a lot of love for Ireland, and it will happen. It will probably happen very soon, knowing Martin. But um, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. That's we'll probably be able to interview you properly. Then we'll do a proper interview. Yes, exactly. Yeah, good stuff. Well, listen, before you go. Do you want to take a moment to like shout outs, you know, any work coming up? Like where can, where can people find out more about you? Um, I mean, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Miss Mia Kang. Um, otherwise, no, not really. Thank you for having me. Shout out to Martin, actually. Why not? We'll give a little shout out to Martin. Get work, get working on getting me that Irish fight, Martin. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Now that I know that yeah. you've been in contact with him, I'm going to hound him. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. It's been an absolute honor. Like, as I said, the reason I wanted to, to come on here was when I first heard your story, I was like, all right, a model who can box, a model that's in my thing. And usually when you hear these stories, you go in and they don't even know how to like put their gloves on properly. 
you know right yeah um, so like I'm just so thrilled and so happy that there's such a good positive role model out there in martial arts so thank you very oh, much for everything you. that you do thank you thank you very much and we'll keep in touch keep in touch with me if ever you if you need anything let me know I will I will and likewise thank you so much I really appreciate it no worries so lovely to meet you you too and I'll see you at your Irish debut <laughs> yes yes it's <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, Mia. Talk to you soon. Thanks, you. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.